I've shown this book at least three times in separate videos uh, for separate artists who have work in it. This is um, the collected Batman Judge Dredd crossover book. Various artists, um, such as artists. The Simon Bisley is the obvious, obvious, bob obvious one. Yeah. Uh, can we zoom? Should we zoom? Would you? Um, there, there was a slip cover, but I take those off because I don't like them. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, there's enough art in here by artists I have shown and haven't shown that I just, you know, it's a cool fucking book. Let's, let's have a look through it, yeah? Together, as a people. That's fucking cool. This is really smart. Um, on Bisley's part. Uh, who, who who wrote this one? Was it John Wagner, Alan Grant? Who wrote this one? I don't know if it says. Um, I assume one of those was. They might have put it in the script, but it's really, really cool. The, the Batman logo, and you see his faces, and his face is kissing, and uh, oh my God, that's really... It's pretty fucking, that's neat, you know, and well realised by the biz. Um, very good bodies interlocking, and then it's cool, like first person view, like a doom fucking hands, and then grabbing them, and you realise it's Judge Death, and he fucks them up. Look, his hands going like up through his anus, coming out his back, and then God knows where it's going in her. Um, that's really cool. Really cool movement there in that chick, and then just badass looking death body scream. And then there's Batman here, so he's in Gotham, evidently, hence this really cool Batmobile. Um, Batman, I like all the collage and stuff. He really went all out on this one because some of his books he uses like just acrylic with the odd bit of like scribbly stuff and spray paint. But in this one, you can see he went all out. The artwork, everything that's rendered is really well rendered. He uses, yeah, like I say, all the collage and shit. Effects, things. Um, there's really not, I mean, this is the obvious one as well. It's This is, as I understand it, quite a lot of people's like first introduction to Simon Bisley proper it was certainly mine, I believe. Um, I love that it's got like the cartoony sort of because this isn't realistic. This very angular, quite cartoony look here. Um, but then it's also got more rendered, still cartoony, still Bisley. But, but I did, it's just a good mix, yeah, because it's still a comic book. Um, so it, it doesn't need to be too over the top serious. Gets impaled on this fence here. It's just, it's all good, man. Yeah. Even these bits, like these bits aren't brilliant. It's not, it's not a brilliant panel for two police officers shooting at the guy. But it's, it's kind of small, goofy, kind of cool, pretty neat. But then you get these bits where it's just like cool, where you know this is like, draw this, get out of the way, whatever. Cool kick scene, cool this bit. Cool that, cool again, movement, the muscles and the legs and shit, the feet, the uh, the foreshortening, the perspective and everything on there. Him getting gored on the fence. Batman's DSL. It's got them going on. Um, very cool bit, like differently painted. You can see pencils and washes and shit in there. It's nice. He's not even dead. What the fuck's going on? Um, I don't want to spend too long on it, because I could. I could do a video on each chapter of this book, but I'm going to aim not to. And then he gets warped into Mega City 1, comes across Mean Machine, a very cool fucking looking Mean Machine. Um, I assume this is roughly a three size, the actual artwork. So the actual painting of this guy is, is possibly about the size of this page. Um, maybe a bit smaller, um, but that's definitely you get this big panel if he, as you as the artist and you're like you know make a good fucking mean machine piece in the middle there. 
because he's the focus of the page, really. I mean, that's that's cool. It's just fucking good, isn't it? Um, and that's it's that all the way through. It's just cool, cool. And that's that's the thing about um, Bisley's artwork. It's just it's so cool. It's not because it's good artwork, but it's not like high fine art, fanciful, you know paintings of vistas and bowls of fruit and stuff it's fucking cool there's guns and shit and the action poses and the angles and everything it's just fucking it's pretty good dread shows up again painting the necessary bits but leaving where you can see like the washes and stuff underneath um yeah i will absolutely talk about this for an hour or more but I'll try not to. Classic dread faces. Him going, what the fuck's going on? And that's the uh, the psychic one. That's a really cool, like, she she's psychic, so she puts her hands on his head and, like, reads his mind or whatever, and that's what's going on in his mind. And then she's there, like, weird, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Robin, cat man i think i don't know um judge death's in there bats penguin uh guy shooting his dad there's little him bats and joker catwoman bats broken glass and shit it's really really cool that's a that would be a piece to own like if you're going to own some original comic book artwork that would be a fucking good one that's cool And then, like, because this pose is kind of like, what's going on with that hand? Like, what is that? But, like, it doesn't matter because in the context of the rest of it, it's like, because shit like this, that's so perfectly realised. <laughs> Those muscles and everything, man. Every little blob in there is just adds to it. And you've got this. <laughs> it's quite funny. Quite a funny juxtaposition of something or other i don't know um yeah i oh, my plan was to flip through and look at the artwork of each and every section of this book but then i'm just going to spend fucking forever talking about this the black and white it's really cool throws that in there. and that's it's really cool to do that in just one panel to go like story 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 boom and then story 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 it's a really nice little like break to put in there with the black and the white Judge Death comes back as whatever. I won't go into the story. I've been doing that, but I'm going to try not to because I'm trying to just look at cool artwork. Let's do that. Let's just flip through and point out cool bits of artwork, which, like I've said, could be the entire fucking book. Um, cool. Mixing with the more heavily rendered pieces with the pencils and shit to sort of give a more a bit of a di dynamic between the two. It's quite cool. Again, here and here. That's something I I always aim to do stuff like this. And then as I'm painting it, I just start painting, almost not realising that I am painting the entire thing. And then by the end of it, I'm like, oh, I guess I just painted it all the same instead of leaving bits like this. Um, which might be for the best because that makes my comics more mine as opposed to more obviously desperately trying to be Simon Bisley. Um, but it was, ah, that's the classic, that's been redone by several people a bunch of times um and rightly so because it's fucking good the bulge is fucking cool um i love the solid red of the the visor there with everything else being pretty well rendered uh, but it is comics like this this one and a couple of others in here that made me want to make my own because everyone wants to make their own comics but I really like how this is painted as well. I don't know exactly why. It's, I think it's, again, the smaller characters. You can only use so much paint because you can only fit so much in. So you're trying to make the character stand out with as little application as possible. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, everyone wants to be a comic book, comic book artist. So you look through comic books and you go, this is cool, this is cool, I want to do that. But I never really felt like I want to make my own comic books until I saw this sort of stuff where I was like, fuck, okay. Like, this is it's something different. It's comic books, and it still has its cartoony side. It still has its serious side. 
but it's it's a whole other way of of putting it together you have to look at the creation of a comic book in a whole different way to make them like this and it's something completely different this guy cam kennedy is the artist covered by mike mignola of hellboy which you can see the sort of hellboy proportions in both of those characters and certainly his layouts compositions dark and light shadows and stuff just that guy some skulls can't can't not have a few of those but yeah cam kennedy um i've seen a few comics by him uh, mainly his judge dread stuff i really like his style because again it's it's cartoony but he puts enough shit and enough attention to detail in there that it's it works serious enough like that glove i really like the line work i think it's all done with pen as opposed to like brushes and stuff either dip pens or drawing pens um but it's a, it's a really strong like all the lines in here it's a really strong graphic look to it um that space is it's impressive you can draw impressive shit like that but then where does it get where can we see some of it i don't even know if it, cartoonish isn't necessarily the right word but like in this pose it's a really good pose but it's at the same time quite basic and quite an obvious like comic book pose and the way the his shoulder pads and the wings of this uh, thing and everything his elbow pads it's like asymmetrical like it's not perfect it's all just like kind of jagged and these bits stick out here and there so i really like that aspect of it that it's not it's not like clean cut you know perfect comic book and this you know it's it's an impressive sort of batman pose but if you look into it it's quite sketchy it's done with fairly minimal lines uh i really really like i like this guy's artwork i i'm my intention is to find more of what he's done maybe start building a collection um especially in terms of inking because i've said before i, I want to try doing more just solid black and white inking uh comics and this is definitely a guy I have my eye on to copy, to try to emulate, because I like what he does. Um, I've not read this. I don't, uh, there's some stuff with dummies, and so I don't know what's going on. Um, but there you go, yeah. That's kind of funny, cartoonish looking stuff. You could see that being in like a, you know, a Sunday funny papers cartoon comic book thing. Um well, yeah, within the context of this story, it works. It's, it's pretty funny proportions and stuff. But it's good still. It's not It's not like... I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. Um, some really good poses and stuff in this fight scene. Um, that's not, not an easy thing to do. That's really cool. He's falling in front of a train. Judge Dredd's scream. Oh, shit. What's going on? Um, well, even this isn't an easy thing to draw, but that's a perfectly... Like, you immediately know this type of scene. I mean, it's a bridge, obviously, but, like, it's quite a specific-looking bridge or whatever. That's a funny pose, but a good one. Uh, yeah, like I say, I really like this guy's artwork. It lends itself very well to these sorts of scenes as well, with the... the the way he does his lines. It's very cool. This is... Oh, I really like this, actually. Like, the fight. It's not It's not the best, because some of the poses are a little bit, like, static, maybe? But this is purely from a... I can sit here and sneer at it all I like, because I'm not a part of it and I don't give a shit. But at the same time, it's a really cool, like, page layout. But they are exchanging blows and jumping around and stuff. I just feel like, because that's like him standing and that's like almost the, the pose is just like a fairly static pose. And then same there, similar here. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad at all. I'm not complaining. That's a really cool, just having him pop out the panel there. I'll do that a lot with my comics because they say when you... you have stuff coming out of the panel it's supposed to be like something big like huge it's so big the panel can't contain it but with mine it's literally like the character stood here and his elbow pops out the panel just a little bit so instead of cutting it off i'll just draw it outside the panel so this much is outside the panel um needlessly but i think it works like that i don't know 
uh, yeah, Cam Kennedy, definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, I, I, I know nothing about him, perfectly honest. I don't know what he's done outside of the little I've seen. Uh, I'm sure he's, he's, he's done stuff, you know. It's really cool. Again, his lines really, really work well. Really good. I like that shit, man. I like that. And this is another painted one. Um, I didn't give it much attention because, I mean, at the risk of sounding, I guess, ignorant or whatever, it wasn't Bisley or Fabry or Murray that I was looking at. Um, but it's a really well painted comic. Not so keen on the, the... This is supposed to be like a paper thing, I guess, from the Riddler or whatever, but having a computer font on there is, is a bit of a loss. That should be hand-drawn. Um, that's pretty fucking fantastic. That's hard to do. Hard to do at all, let alone to do it that well. So kudos to him for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say. It's obviously like acrylics or whatever, but like, that's pretty great. That's really nicely painted. Really good texture. You can see it with like spray paint and stuff and washes in the background. Um, I have to blow my nose. There. Um, it's just a really, really nice looking comic. The colours are very muted. Um, obviously the reds and stuff pop pretty heavily, but overall, like it's very sort of greys, browns, even the blues and greens are quite toned down compared to, you know, this stuff. The colours in this are colours, man, they really pop. Whereas this is more toned down, which I kind of like for for its own thing. Because it does give it its own look as opposed to looking like all the other comics. Um, I, yeah, I don't know if I have much of a point on that other than that is a thing I notice about this book. This is really cool. I love the, the lack of panels as well because it'd be really easy to do it like this with just panels. But to have that all in one one page, clearly separated, but it's really, really cool. That's neat. Neat little device there. This is cool. I like the guy in his underwear. I've no idea what's happening. I've not read this. Uh, but it looks good. I don't think it has quite the, the weight and impact of Bisley's comic. Because the proportions are almost too realistic. Because it's just man in suit. Whereas, you know, where's that? Am I going to be able to find it? No, probably not. Fuck. God damn you, son of a bitch. Yeah, that one picture of Dread with his bulging penis. Oh, God, I've lost it, haven't I? I'm not going to. Never find it. Shit. Why can't I... F uh, this isn't even that necessary. I just wanted to make a comparison. There you go. So that's like... That's impactful. There's shit to, to go on there. That's like... Pa -pow, pa -pow. Whereas that's just like... A painting of dread in a place. The fact that the background has a lot of detail in it is good. But it almost detracts from... I don't know. That's that's just me personally because it, it's really well painted. It's really good. I don't mean to take away from that at all. I'm just saying that might be why I didn't pay it much attention beforehand because it jumped out at me less than other, you know, chapters in this book. This monster's really cool. I like the design. That's really nice shadow contrast and everything. The red sky is really, really decent there. That's a cool, like, insert panel. I'm all about the insert panel as well, about having big, big picture with a panel in it. I love the insert panels. I'm going to be mentioning those in my forthcoming How to Draw Comics, the Ewan Way book, or whatever I'm going to bloody title the thing, How Not to Be a Marvel Artist because you're not good enough. I like that panel, love these panels, love the small ones, you know I do, I go on about them all the fucking time. Um, 
I like I like how this is quite like blasé. Like, eh, yeah, I'm just going to shoot him in the knee, whatever. But at the same time, maybe there could be more action. I don't know. I don't know. Like I say, I've not even read the thing. I also, I like how they go back to this. So it's like this shot and then other stuff and then this shot and then other stuff and then this shot. I like, that's quite a cool, like, back and forth mechanic. The red sky again, really solid. Really nice composition here. The gargoyles and then Batman. And obviously Batman, you know, you could argue he's quite gargoyle-like in himself. Um, in how he carries himself, how he is. That's a really nice panel with the insert panels. Really nice series of three, actually, where obviously this guy, I guess, is teleporting or whatever. That's really nice. Very cool. Spiral staircase. Monster fight going on. So there's, there's some really, really cool stuff in here. This is cool. These All these panels are cool. What's this guy's fucking name? Jesus. Uh, I know it. I just, it, it, I don't know it enough to be able to recall it. Um, Carl Critchlow and Dermot Power. Dermot Power does some of the pages a bit later on. Um, they, I don't want to say they're unimpressive, but they definitely don't quite hold up to this stuff. Um, but yeah, that's really strong. Um, and then this is fucking cool. It's like the thing at a Robocop in it. Here you go, this is where, is it Dermot Power? Yeah, you can see, this looks like um, old Slane comics. I think actually this guy did some Slane comics. Um, actually, I'm 100% certain he did. He's got a, a cover on one of them. It's, it's, like I say, it almost looks more like my paintings than these fucking top of the line professional artist paintings. This is, no, oh, uh, see, I, I'm not saying it looks amateur because it, it's good. It's very, very good. It's just in contrast to other paints. Like that's fucking cool. Use of color and light there. That's brilliant. That's really, really fucking cool. Um, it just feels a little bit less than the previous comic really good there's some really good elements i like his effects that might be one of my favorite things of his actually this is cool that's cool that's a decent panel <laughs> it's pretty funny ping off of him shoots him in the arm just good artwork that's fucking cool really like that like the nice arch of his shoulder pad there. Very chunky looking flesh on them both. Small ones. And then we come to Die Laughing. This was the reason I got this book in the first place. Oh, 69. Um, was Glenn Fabry. Glenn Fabry's artwork was the reason I got this book. And then I looked at the front bit and I was like, Oh, that's that Simon Bisley guy. Um, and I looked through this and I was like, oh, that's quite cool. And I looked through it again and I was like, oh, that's really good. And I looked through it again and I was like, fuck, this is really fucking cool. Um, and that's sort of where my love of Bisley came from. But it started with this guy. Glenn Fabry was the man. The realism of his anatomy is like second to none. In terms of comic books, they can be like this pose is a pretty good example of like, he can do dynamic stuff, he really, really can. But it's it's almost, the anatomy is almost too good that it doesn't bend and stretch in crazy ways like Simon Bisley might do. But look at that fucking, the muscles and everything and the, just the delicate lighting on the top of that, the rim lighting there and the fabric. And not just fabric, because he's got, fabric and he makes it look good but he's put these kisses all over his suit the joker's suit so trying to paint creased fabric with all of that shit going on it's bananas insane man and he does stretch a little bit here and there he, he does it where it's necessary that's really cool the joker like warping out into uh from gotham into mega city one i guess and he painted in black and white so he because he's like He's now just a husk 
of the Joker. Really cool, like different where, where he's got the black and white there, and then like the different coloured uh, panel backgrounds are really, really good. But yeah, Glenn Fabry's artwork is is he like I've said before, he's my number one artist. If someone asks who's your favourite artist, my go-to answer, just so I have a go-to answer, is Glenn Fabry. Um, this is, loses something being spread across two pages because it's really, really good, but you lose a lot with the crease. Um, but yeah, like the Mega City mutants and stuff, little hands and things, people, blue people. Very, very well painted by Mr. Fabry. The lips and stuff, they're so like well realized and rendered. Little ones, little people. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just like the Bisley one, I could look through this again and again and again. The legs, man. So good. So good. It's so fucking good. That's pretty cool. Really good effect on these crystals as well, with the dark judges inside of them. Really nicely done. Just showing off anatomy. I think I've said before, the gloves don't need all these creases, but they look good for having them in there. And that's one thing um, I noticed straight away about Glenn Fabry and his style of painting, his creases in clothing, in skin and everything. Maybe he puts too many, maybe he puts just enough. Uh, he puts a lot in, but... He does them good. He does them good. That's really, really cool. The hands and the face and everything. And the lighting on the face is really cool because it's coming from underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he sticks a crowbar through his head. Just to show that he's not all there. Cool, cool, cool. It's all very cool. A little bit weird looking. That doesn't look quite. There's something a little bit off. But, you know, I could say that about every single panel of every single page of the comics I do, so whatever. Uh, then the Dark Judges get re-resurrected, re 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 re-resurrected into these schmuck bodies um, and this was the the first page I ever saw of this comic I saw it online and I thought I need that book where the dark judges are coming back to life if you want to know how to paint fire that is how you paint fire because it's not perfect by any means it's not like an, an exact depiction of fire but to represent fire with paint He's on it. Um, how long are we going? Okay, we're, we're getting up to half an hour. Um, and then I think the next few pages are, I think, drawn by Glenn Fabry and painted by Jim Murray. I think. Or they're drawn by Jim Murray and painted by Glenn Fabry. I think painted by Jim Murray, I think. That seems more right. These few pages. Yeah, because that's a Fabry face. So that might have been painted by... That might be painted by Fabry, actually. And then these are Murray. You can kind of just tell by the, the painting style being ever so slightly different. And then... Well, that's really nice, making the city yellow in the background. Um... These few pages do look like a bit of a rush job. I guess they swapped from one artist to another just to get them done. A cover by Fabry with a bookmark so I can get to it easily. 1998. Shit's old, man. And then this is all Jim Murray, who... Again, so him, Fabry and Bisley I have made separate videos on. I mentioned this work of theirs, but it's just mind blowing that this is hand painted. Like it looks digital, like it's so well rendered, 
with paint that it looks digital. It really is fucking something else. I love the shapes in this man, the skinny guy with the big fucking pads and everything on. Yeah, oh, the, the, the shapes and how solid he makes shit feel, especially his Judge Dread. His Batman is fucking cool too. Black and white panel, we like those. Um, this, I've said before, is fucking incredible. Like the Animorphs changing thing. Ugh, oh, just so good. I said before about that, that um, Bisley piece. For comic book artwork that you'd want to own the originals of, this would absolutely be one of them. If I had the sort of income where I could comfortably just buy original comic book artwork, this would be one I'd want to track down. Probably. Ugh, it's just good, man. It's just fucking good. I like he, how his people are really like cartoony and goofy. And I've said before my theory about, I, I, you know, I believe he had at least a hand in the graffiti world. Um, and his characters are very much, they have an inkling of graffiti style character to them with these cartoony guys in the background. Um, and I like that. And I like that with how well painted they are. It's a really cool sort of like, you paint graffiti, but then you take what you do there into this sort of level of shit. And it's just insane. Some good shit. Good shit, good shit, good shit. That's cool. That's really fucking cool. Some Cthulhu shit going on. <clears throat> Just how solid that feels, man. And that's a hand painted painting of that. Ah, oh, that's fucking good. That's fucking good. This, that, that. The angle's perfect. The airbrush in the background to make it all blurry. Each page must have taken fucking days. <laughs> like, to have all that airbrush and then painting this as that well, that must have taken at least a couple of days just for that one page, let alone all the rest of it, like all this, the detail in the background. That's what takes the most fucking time to do. When you've got a, a couple of figures in a page, as long as you know what you're doing, you can get those done fairly quick. But when it comes to stuff like this, because every, you've got highlight, every little fucking blade and leaf, these animals and stuff, all the windows, that's what takes fucking ages to do. I mean, it, it's good that it's all in similar colours, because the more colours you have, you're mixing every single colour and every single shade of every single colour, so that takes fucking forever. That's cool. More good original artwork. People riding dinosaurs. More airbrush backgrounds. This panel blew me away when I first saw it. The airbrush background, the little, like, the the spray blur on his legs as he's vaulting over the fence. And, like, the fence here and then blurred in the... Oh, it's mighty good. Mighty, mighty good. Death taking a bullet to the head. That red bloodied hand man that's so good so yeah there's a video of me creaming my pants and it's fucking good artwork and this i've said before i'm, I'm fairly certain each one of these was individually hand painted um in different you know aspect ratios and the dread feels solid as fuck the curve, the litter. Oh, it's all just fucking good shit, man. This is what I look at when it comes to painting comics. Like Marvel and DC, yeah, yeah, image, meh, yeah, meh. This kind of shit. Even 2080 as a whole is, I find it to be fairly lacklustre, but there's the gems like this that really stand out. Deceased. That's fucking cool. 
um, Judge Death being like, lost your gun, dearie, disarmed, defenseless. And then Dread comes in, fwing, deceased. Cuts his head off with a massive shard of mirror. Slash. That's fucking good. I'll have to see if I can find it. I might have mentioned it before, but there's a hilarious bit. Fucking love this. That's so badass. Love the silhouette Batman and the little dread there. There as well. Um, where Judge, uh, um, Judge Fear, I think, is the one with the like iron grate on his head, the portcullis, and he opens it up like he was doing with that guy looking all Cthulhu and shit. Gaze into the face of fear. That's his, his, his line he uses. He uses that on Dread. He goes, gaze into the fist of fear, opens up his portcullis helmet, and then Dread goes, gaze into the fist of Dread, and pounds his fist through his head. That's one of the best bits of any comic I've ever seen. It's so perfectly written. And it's, I, I don't know, like, if that was where Gaze into the Face of Fear originally came from in terms of the comic. Because it's, if it was around before then, it's like, how has someone not already done Gaze into the Fist of Dread? Like, it's so perfect, man. That's incredible. The texture. I, I wonder if he did, if that's genuine, like he put the texture down onto the page. Because you can see the spray he's used like I, it looks like this was some kind of stencil. Uh, he used stencil for the shapes, and then used an airbrush or spray paint to do the colours because you can see them fade into each other, and you can see the way they go over the texture. And if so, that means he did it around this shape of the Joker, or he stuck the Joker on top. But I'm willing to bet because you can see the underpainting here, so he did the texture around it. But that's, that's some fucking dedication. Like, that's like, oh, I'm going to paint a wall that the Joker is going to be shot up against. Cool, you do that. But then to go to the effort of putting the texture on it with the graffiti on it, that's another level. Like, that's where you get, like, that's where the art really comes in. Comic book artists, cool, you ink this, you draw some bullet holes and shit and go, that is wall, and then the colorist does their thing but when it comes to doing it like this like fuck me these people are something else and there are great like comic book artists who just do the inking and stuff but you just don't see this anymore it's all digital which is cool but knowing that someone textured the fucking page airbrushed the graffiti on which again definitely had some kind of graffiti background um and then painted this on top of it but not just paint this on top of it but paint it that well the detail in the hair and the skin all these tendons and shit the tone changes in skin because it's not just skin color it's greens and yellows grays pinks and reds all in this skin it looks really mottled and like unhealthy the texture in the clothes and stuff it's all like even if that was digital, it would not, like, or as a digital piece, if you did this, it would look like a digital piece. This is... Uh, oh, let me just wipe all the cum out of my beard from sucking these guys off. Christy. And then Batman goes home to his bat cave and Joker's locked up, I guess, and whatever, whatever. Glenn Fabry, that's cool. Quite, it looks like it was quite a quick Glenn Fabry piece, especially like the broader brush strokes in the Joker's face and stuff. And then Lobo Judge Dread, a bit of a weird one. Uh, sort of more, more traditional looking in terms of comic book art. Uh, I've not paid much attention to it. I've not given Lobo much attention in general outside of, of Bisley. Maybe I ought to. Um, uh... But yeah, it just looks, you can really like, I don't know. I think the colour is the thing for me. Like with, is it Cam Kennedy's piece? The muted colours, I'm not a huge fan of, but they allow you to focus on the inking more. 
which looks like actually he might have inked it and then digitally like cut out all of the white so it's left these like kind of recessed curves in between the black lines um whereas with this the inking is fairly standard like it looks like comic book brushwork or whatever uh, maybe pen maybe a mixture of both and then the, the color is too like just sort of meh digital comic book coloring for me to be as impressed with it and that's cool that's really cool but it's there's something about it that feels I don't know kind of average and a little bit lost because of the, the medium I think still cool though anyway that's I uh, like I say I could spend hours and hours pouring over every panel not even page I could talk about this panel in particular this panel in particular every single these bits of paper it's not it's nothing special but it's a it's an indication of uh, uh.